Hello to my wonderful modern art class. I am really excited about the work that all of you have been submitting in the class and the discussions are truly fantastic. Um, and because of the contributions that you are all sharing in the class. So it's a real joy and I want to start off by thanking you. Uh, this week I'm sharing a little video of our notes of uh, what we are covering this week. Um, I've noticed that many of you are working asynchronously and that means kind of working at your own time and at your own pace and that's totally fine. I prefer that myself when I'm taking an online class. So to kind of help with that and to share a personal note um, to our agenda this week, I'm sharing some virtual notes instead. And I think in the future next week, I may just cancel our virtual office hours. If no one needs that time, that's totally fine. Um, I might use that time to work on other things, catch up on your grades. And I'll still be here for um, extra help. Uh, I'm only an email away and I have lots of appointment slots um, time slots that we can meet and talk about the class. So with uh, that said, let's dive into week five. It's hard for me to believe how fast time is moving, but we are at week five. Whew. So fast, so fast. And the hardest part of the class is really over. Um, you've gotten to know the class, you've gotten to know online learning, and now my hope is that the uh, you'll be in a good groove for the, the rest of the quarter. So every week you'll see the same content, a summary, and then the reading and viewing materials, which you know include articles and videos. And this week you have a check for understanding. I'm going to start alternating. One week you'll have a check. The next week you'll have a discussion. One week you'll have a check. The next week you'll have a discussion. So my hope is that you know, you'll have a little more time to put your thoughts together for discussions. Um, and I'm using kind of two different learning styles for assessments. I know that some people love discussions and some people don't and some people like just taking a quiz and some don't. So there's a little bit of variety there in, in the assessments. Now it is really a, just a check for understanding because if there's anything you didn't understand or didn't get, I want you to go back, reread the content, go through the content again get that material that you missed and retake the check. So I hope that helps. It's, it's my way of um, kind of using a grading strategy to help encourage you to reach the goals. And what are our goals this week? What are we talking about this week? Well, this week we're kind of continuing um, to understand the, the roots of modernism, the, the foundations of modernism. How did that start? Where did that come from? Um, what are the influences and in histories that affected those artists? This week, we're going to take a look at the changing role of the artist as a critic of society. And if we were to look at art history in the, in the whole, we would see that at, at the beginning of civilization, artists were often employed um, many times for functional purposes, making jewelry, clothes, decorating our homes, and architecture, creating homes. Um, and then as civilization evolved, they were often employed um, by the ruling class. The, the king or emperor um, to create artwork for the empire. Uh, it was sometimes um, artwork that showed the prestige or power of the ruler um, and, and sometimes artwork that, you know, celebrated their, their victories. So, you know, artists, you know, 
were were kind of advertising, if you will, um, for the ruling class. And in mo in modern times, as society changes and we we start to shift away from this kind of feudal style of government, and and democracies are born. The role of the artist changes as artists gain more freedom and everyday people gain more freedom as the middle class is born and starts to grow. Um, the, the function of art in society starts to change. And so we're looking at that kind of time period. We're going to learn influential artists that were working at those times. And you'll also practice kind of effectively describing, discussing, and evaluating Western art from the 18th century up to 1970. After 1970 is technically contemporary art. Oops, oops I'm scrolling too much there. So this week you'll have reading and viewing materials with an exit ticket and a check for understanding. Here's my trick. Always use these terms and concepts to know as you study, as you take notes, and taking notes is studying. So if you write down these terms and then dive into the reading material and take notes on these things, who's Ilya Rapin? Who's William Hogarth? What is marriage a la mode? Who is Kazimir Malevich? What is the Ashcan School? And who was Tamara Delimpica? So when you get to those topics, take notes on those topics. That is where I pull the questions for your check for understanding. And that's also the content that you'll see in your discussion. So very upfront and hopefully easy to navigate. For each uh, module, you'll see those terms. And that's what you want to take notes on. And as we take a look at the next item in the module, we have our reading and viewing materials. Uh, there's Ilya Rapin right there. So, you know, jotting that down, especially with some of the videos, video content, um, it can be uh, difficult to navigate. It's okay. What did I need to know from this video? Or, or navigating this like a textbook. In a traditional textbook, we usually have things that are highlighted um, or at the beginning or the end, there are the concepts to know. And thank you, we've already got some folks who have shared what they have learned from this. Really great way to get you started. And I hope sometimes those notes might become your future discussion. So I'll come back out here to the modules. Yeah, we've already covered quite a bit of territory already. The check for understanding is due on May the 9th. You're welcome to submit it early. They open early. They'll, uh, it's open today and it closes at the end of the week. Um, also to let you work asynchronous. So if you want to work ahead, you can. Not all of the checks, you know, they hold. They, they won't open until that week, but you do have a week window to go in there and complete the check. I do want to look forward just a little bit because um, just to prepare you, um, I have a final exam that's part there's, a, there's a, a check that you can take, but a big part of it is a group project. And um, next week, I'll start to share more content on that just to help you prepare. The big thing I want you to know is please don't be apprehensive, scared, like, ah, about group projects. I myself absolutely hated them as a student. Um, I was often the nerd who was doing most of the work and not getting the credit. And I even had a fellow student take my notes and turn them in as his own and cheated. Like, I didn't tell me. So 
that was a really bad experience for me as a student. You know, the teacher had to step in, but that was really not a lot of fun. Um, so I actually avoided doing group projects for many, many years, but I have found out that the benefit far outweighs the anxiety or nervousness that you feel. Um, we get all kinds of benefits from working together. It helps motivate us. It helps us feel connected. Um, it helps you really feel like you're a member of the class and not just a member. Um, and it, it can make things a lot more fun to be engaged with other people. Um, in one big, I do a couple of things really differently. When I do group projects, there's a lot of work that you turn in individually and you get an individual grade for. So even though I do group projects, everybody gets a different grade and you really get a grade for the work that you do. I, I treat it more almost like a job and like your timesheet or the work that you're submitting. And the, the credit that you get for the work that you're doing is your grade. So you'll, you'll see that we have a very different way of navigating this and um, it works really well. I've been having doing group projects uh, throughout COVID um, and, and they've, they've worked beautifully. So I'll have some projects to share with you. They're not in there yet, um, but I will post some previous projects to share with you. Um, and um, just know that, you know, it's not anything to be nervous about. It's, it's actually going to be a lot of fun and, you know, give all of us an opportunity to really engage together. Now, I'm looking here for our extra credit discussion. Aha! Aha! I put it all the way at the beginning this time, but you may have missed this. Um, if you missed this, there is extra credit during this class. And I give extra credit for service learning and volunteering and arts and cultural engagement. And what does that one mean? Arts and cultural engagement. Museums. Um, concerts, theater, dance, um, art festivals. Wait a minute. A lot of those are canceled. Well, they're virtual. A lot of the things that you would do face to face, you can do virtual. And so anything that you are, are participating in, you share with us. It can be a picture. Ah, Leanne's already jumped in. Thank you, Leanne. Um, just share with us you know, a description of what happened, what you learned, what you got out of it. Um, and thank you, you know, and, and you can also share um, the link. Um, I can see that that was in response to the announcement I sent out about our censorship debate and giving us a deeper dive into how implicit bias um, affects police shootings. So how do those cartoons you know, affect us and, and things like that. But there's, there's a whole list here, and I'm going in to include in your announcement, powwow is this week at Edmonds, and I'm hosting on Thursday, May the 6th, an artist talk. So you're welcome to come. Now, I'm not sharing my art. Um, I am hosting, them seeing the talk um, between three uh, amazing indigenous artists and they're sharing their work and just talking about that but there's a bunch of events with powwow that you can go to for extra credit and service learning so i'll share some of those in the announcements and i like to send those out i go to a lot of virtual events myself and i want to share that opportunity with you so you know the more you're engaged and involved the more you're learning and growing and i want to give you credit for that all right, so I hope to see you at Pow Wow or um, inspire you to get involved in other arts and cultural events or to volunteer in your community. All right, you have a great week and take good care of yourself and good luck on the check. Although I know you won't need it, you'll do great.